Man, good morning and hey howdy. We're outside at the famous James Adams, this is my house panel. So some of you might be a little disappointed. You're like, dude, you're a master electrician. Here you go. This is what a real electrician's panel looks like. And by real, I mean genuine. So come on in, let me, let me introduce you to my panel. So this is a Square D QO. We've got solar installed. Uh, we have an old surge protector that we're, install we're gonna replace this morning. This is an Eaton Ultra, and we're gonna replace this with the first uh, the, uh, Siemens. But here's what I wanted you to see, Paul, if you look at this. Look at this, here's my stainless steel uh, landscape lighting transformer. And guess what? It's got bird poop and mud on it. There you go. So like a lot of us who are in a trade, right? Is you have your life and then a few, a few months later you wake up and say, I want landscape lights, where am I gonna put that? You put that in there, it's like, I need a surge protector. Where am I gonna put that? And then you come back two or three years later and it's like, what have I done? This is, this is a mess. In any case, again, it's a QO panel. We're gonna take out the Ultra and we're gonna put in the FS140. So I'm gonna get to it. First of all, again, Siemens FS140. And when you look at the instructions, this housing is outdoor rated. Um, one of the things I really love about this from the installation side, look how long these leaves are. That's gotta be, gosh, three feet. Hang on, hang on, watch this. See if I can do this and not cut myself. Have any of you ever cut yourself on a measuring tape? It's super savage and very embarrassing. When you're on a job site and somebody says, why is your hand bleeding? It's like, oh, my measuring tape bit me. All right, yep, 36 inches. Um, I'm sure that was printed somewhere, but the measuring tape was way more fun. Why is that important? Because a lot of times, man, there's just not an easy place to put this bad boy. And like the Ultra, one of the things I hated about that, I think it only has 12 inch leads. So if you're already in a full panel and you're installing the Ultra, and side note, the instructions tell you not to splice this wire. There you go, gets a little complicated. Um, with the FS140, plenty of wire. So I'm gonna turn off the two pole 50 that's now for the Ultra. Take the Ultra out real quick, put in the two pole 20 uh, that the FS140 asked for and put it in. Somebody, while I'm doing this, somebody had um, messaged me about why surge protectors, some of them have breakers and some don't. And so the difference is, is the class one or the type one breakers, excuse me, surge protectors, you can tap ahead of the main breaker. So if I had a type one, like Ditec makes some, several manufacturers do, I could tap that, and again, the utility company allowing, I could have tapped that into my meter can ahead of this main or tap it up here ahead of the main. Um, the type two surge protectors, manufacturers require some kind of overcurrent protection, i.e. a breaker. So let's do this. Okay, 50's out. Make sure this is set back. Let's put this back in its place. It's a plug on neutral style. Okay. And let's finish taking apart this nonsense. So yes, the panel is still hot. Uh, but I don't think that's going to be a big deal. Famous last words, right? Paul's backing up like, oh, I think you're, I think something bad's going to happen. Here we go. Okay. So you see here, I, I'll admit this, I'll be super honest. See this wire net, the splice on the ground of all things? Shouldn't have spliced the ground. Um, as, I'm t as I'm doing this, again, read the instructions. With the FS140, they're asking you to keep their leads as short as possible and to have it straight as possible. So as you're planning to do this job, if you're doing this yourself, or if you're one of those people that likes to annoy your electrician and hang over their shoulder, 
You want to make sure that these leads for your FS140 are as short as possible. Don't have bends if you can get it. And keep it close to where you're connecting to your breaker and your, um, your neutral bus. Okay. So one thing I noticed when I unpackaged this, the FS140, look at this. Big red tag. Some of you guys know this. Some of you guys do bad work. The inspectors hand you one of these. Aren't you glad they're not this big? God, that would be demoralizing. But what it is, is they're doing bonding and grounding hazard. What they're saying is basically the service that you're putting these surge protectors into have to have a ground or a neutral to ground bond. You think, of course, but here's the thing. I've had several people comment and message me where they live, the region or the country, they don't have grounds or neutrals because if you're primarily 220, you don't need a neutral, so there's no ground. So here's the problem. Without a service ground, what Siemens is saying, their surge protector may not work. So something to think about. Again, where we're using ground to shunt or redirect all this horrible voltage out of the house. So if you, where you live, you don't have a ground or a neutral, we need to think about that. Let's get this uh, Ultra out. So the Eaton Ultra is a good surge protector, and I've installed hundreds easily. Um, but a couple of things between the short wires and the, to be honest, the value as a, both a, an electrical contractor and as a homeowner, there's, um, to be honest, I just think the FS140 for the protection and the quality of it, I think you can just get more for your money. Uh, but again, everybody has an opinion, no worries. Um, the other thing while I'm staring down at my FS140, uh, the FS140 has an alarm, an audible, which is really cool. I've never heard it, but the instructions talk about it pretty much incessantly. Um, that the FS140 will have uh, both warning lights and an audible, okay? So if there's a problem with this, it'll let you know. So the cool part is most people's breaker boxes are in their garage or somewhere remote. Well, even this panel, it's on the, the other side of the house from where I usually go. So unless I walk back here pretty routinely to look at the, the indicator lights, I don't know if there's anything wrong. So the Audible is a cool feature. Um, there you go. So we need to open a couple of things. Again, this is outdoor rated. It has a three quarter inch hub, okay? So what I have to do is I'm gonna find, pop out a three quarter inch KO on the panel. It's gonna get a little noisy for a second and get this set up. Today I'm using uh, non-metallic liquid tight. Some people, wherever you live, we call it uh, Carlflex or Carlon. Um, but yeah, it's non-metallic, it's rated for outdoors, protects wires, be fantastic. So let's find a three quarter here that's handy for us. There we go. Let's keep clear of the hot parts. We finally have our three quarter inch hole. In the bottom of the panel, I'm gonna put this three quarter inch connector in here. Again, it's outdoor rated. Love these things. Got a little O-ring slash gasket there. Um, yeah. Some of you old school guys will say, why are you using plastic? You should be using EMT. I, I disagree. <laughs> Not for something like this. All right, so let's plan out where we want to mount this. Okay, now, so we don't want to put, I was at first tempted to put a loop on this, like almost like a drip loop. And I've got plenty of wire, but after looking at their instructions that say to avoid bends, what I am going to do is flip this. And also helps me keep my lead shorter, quite a bit shorter. And I'm gonna mount it about right here. Some of that will be driven by whether or not the car line will bend like that and still stay watertight. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, we're gonna go from here, gonna offset. And then when we screw it into the hub, if you're using an outdoor rated, just we'll look at these threads. So it's interesting, these threads are not tapered. And a lot of outdoor hubs are tapered. So it's not a problem until you go to screw in 
a non-tapered connector into a uh, tapered hub and it won't seat. Which for you guys with inspectors running around, that's a red tag because it's not installed correctly. All right. So we're seated. I've got the gasket engaged, but not crushed. Okay. Well, there's another nasty one. So while I'm doing this, a shout out uh, to Lionel, Chris, and Joshua, guys who uh, were able to use and uh, f use a, a couple of our uh, FS140s we had in stock at a great deal, which is a tough thing, but we were able to do that and it worked out well, because right now, uh, the price on these, if you've shopped them on Amazon, the price of these is getting ridiculous okay so we're gonna land the ground in the neutral we have this bus um, yeah and wire strippers and needle nose I use needle nose because I don't always like sticking my fingers into the live busing area go and that's our terminal right there let's strip that see if we can do it without nicking the crap out of the uh, the strands I don't think I lost too many there should be okay and going into the bus oh already had a strand pull out so I'm just twisting it because if you don't twist you're gonna end up losing strands hang on let's open this up so what's happening is is i'm pushing the wire into the neutral bus some of the strands are pushing back so uno mas i didn't trim this one i think the length is is good i don't think there's excess there that's going to be problematic neutral same path similar let's go up there's the other one. Perfect length. I'm stripping these a little long on this bus bar so I can see so I can see the uh, strands poke through on the back side. All right, we got a sub panel feeder in the way, so I'm going to use my needle nose to reach in there and keep my hands out of harm's way, hopefully. So on some of these, when you reach around, you can pre-bend your wire to get around some obstacles so you're not having to try to undo a bunch of neutral wires. So here we go. Okay. So let's spread these neutrals a little bit. Neutral port ahoy right there. Without having to thread it through a jungle of solid number 12s. Here we go. Crikey meat. There we go. We're through. No loose strands. Hang on. Okay. Yes. The other side of this is you can and probably should torque these. Not going to. Okay. Again, based off the instructions, we're going to do these a little short or not have excess. Keep the bends to a minimum. So now we're going under the breaker lugs, so these don't need to be as long. Use my fingers to help set my depth there on how far down I am. Okay, here we go. Let's make sure this is backed out. So the QO has a square washer under the lug. So note to self, the reason they do that is so the QO is one of the few breakers, if not the only one, that you can put two wires under the terminal. You can use, if you look, you'll see 
that the square washer has space for two conductors under it. So you could legally double lug this breaker. Not sure why you would do that, but you could. Okay, do the pre bend. And here we go. Okay, we are done. So, again, I have not anchored this. I think you guys watching me uh, run a hammer drill probably isn't that exciting. But, so we're clear, we're landed. Go ahead and turn this on, I always turn away. There you go. That's all the excitement we're gonna get out of this bad boy. All right, so, the only other thing I wanted to mention in passing, and let me know if you wanna see this, is doing this with the flush mount kit. Um, it's mechanically very much the same, but working with the drywall and putting the flush plate is a whole different monster with this. It is, the other side, why a lot of guys don't do the flush plates on these is they're so expensive. The flush plates, and I've shopped them, they're 80 or 90 bucks a hit, at least, so. Anyways, thanks for joining me this morning. And a lot of you guys, the OCD guys are flipped out because the surge protector is hanging crooked and my transformer is hanging crooked. I'm going to get to it. Don't worry. You guys have a great day. Questions and comments, click like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time.